about a total of 813 more BTC since that drop happened. And if we go back six months, they've added a total of about 64.3K Bitcoin worth tens of billions of dollars, I believe. So mm. it's it's still looking quite strong from sharks and whales right now. And um, I think we mentioned it last time we talked, but the only concern I have is that stable coins aren't really being accumulated. So the dry powder that implies that whales and sharks have more and more and more to swap for Bitcoin, that's a little on the limited side because they've already been swapping so much Tether and USD coin. Welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Edward, and I have Brian from Santiment with me. And of course, guys, you know we're going to do a deep dive into the metrics and what's happening with Bitcoin and altcoins and even XRP as we got news that the XRP or the first XRP ETF, spot ETF, has been filed in the United States by Bitwise. Brian, great to see you. Great to see you. Yeah, lots going on. We obviously had a correction the past three to four days after a uh, one of the more predictable tops, I wouldn't say it was just a, an obvious given, but Friday was kind of when we were seeing peak euphoria. And sure enough, you know, about 24 hours after that, midway through the weekend, we start to see this nosedive from a lot of crypto prices. So many people are trying to figure out what to do next. And, and that's what we'll try to do here on the call. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, as it relates to Bitcoin, I've been telling people, like, be cautiously optimistic we don't know if the bottom is in yet, and there could still be more volatility before before we actually start breaking out to new all time highs. And then, Brian, to your point, like you throw in, into the mix a bunch of macro news about war and this and that, it just adds fuel to the fire. Totally, yeah. I mean, there's there's always real world news that can throw a wrench into what the you know probable direction was going to be in crypto, and I think with the news that kind of broke in the Middle East, uh, there's a lot more reasons than just whales and, you know, FOMO and FUD among the crowd that are causing price havoc right now. So let's take a look at the data and what is it telling us? Yeah, of course. So we'll start with just a quick update on what we saw Friday. We posted this out to the public. Um, it actually went super viral. It was a little unexpected that it got quite as much attention as it did, but we basically said, you know, sentiment is at a year high in terms of bullishness. This is the ratio of positive comments versus negative comments using our algorithm, which is not a perfect science, but a pretty good one. We're able to pick up if someone is, you know, mentioning Bitcoin in a positive light versus a negative light. You know, if people are saying I'm buying or to the moon and stuff, and it isn't sarcasm, right? Like we're able to pick up that it's bullish. Hmm. And long story short, we see this huge, huge spike in euphoria after this 15 to 20%, I forget exactly what the rise was, but around that range, bounce right here. Uh, and we're kind of flattening out right at that moment. And we warned people, we, we basically just said, if you're awaiting Bitcoin's new all time high, it may need to wait until the crowd slows down their own expectations. There are currently 1.8 bullish posts toward Bitcoin for every one bearish post. And I'd say it averages maybe more like 1.2 to 1. There's always a little bit of a bullish bias. People don't want to just be on social me media talking natively about crypto. They're mm -hmm. into it for a reason. They, they expect prices to go up long term. But when it goes up, you know, almost 2 to 1 like this, that's a sign that we're getting pretty overheated and people are putting a little too much buy pressure without any sell pressure. And in a zero-sum game, you always need both or else prices tend to suddenly pivot and go the opposite direction and that's exactly what happened um and now everyone's like oh maybe santa it sort of knows what we're talking about um and and <coughs> excuse me the question is where are we now uh there's so many different things we can look through uh, i'll try to get through some of what the crowd is doing at, at this moment after the mini collapse that we saw as well as how the whales are accumulating. And mm. you can see right here, just off of prices, mostly a sea of red. Over the past week, this is from last Wednesday to this Wednesday, it's only down a modest 2.5%. Ethereum down about 6%. But you can see, especially assets like Monero, which are 
still getting delistings from major exchanges right now, mm-hmm. dropping 16%. There's still some, some meme coins doing quite well. You can see Shiba Inu up 8% in the past week, uh, Pepe up 14, Bonk up 17. We'll dive into how meme coin performances are looking as of now uh, toward the end of the call. But uh, I think another thing, as we alluded to at the beginning, this is very much being impacted by the war concerns. We saw the same phenomenon going back to 2022 with the Ukraine and Russia war news. When mm-hmm. that first broke uh, back in, I think, oct, what was it? The early part of this year, something like April or May, uh, when we really started to see the Israel and Palestine situation pick up for the first time uh, and, and hit global uh, mainstream. That's when we started to see a little bit of a dip there. And now it's back. We're seeing a, a, a pretty big uh, conscious consciousness spike in terms of the Middle East's uh, conflict. And all of the top keywords, uh, Iran, Israel, war, missiles, East, Middle, these are all related to the war right now, and people are clearly uh, concerned. Uh, when there's war, there are economic consequences that can trickle over to crypto. Uh, some think that you know war can actually be a, a long-term benefit to crypto. Maybe that's the case, depending on what kind of war you're talking about. You know, from an ethical perspective, you know, we at Santiment hope everyone is okay, and we're not rooting for war ever. But yes, I mean, if if currencies collapse and more reliance is on decentralized uh, currency exchange, yes, I, I guess I see that point. But the the usual immediate impact is we see a retrace and uh, a bit of a drop due to economic consequences that usually translate over to crypto. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense, and. You know, like you mentioned, we saw a bit of this with the Ukraine-Russia war and in the short term, super volatile, but then eventually things went back to normal business. If I don't I want to make sure I use the right words here because I'm not trying to make light of war, obviously, but the markets eventually stabilized and started moving up. And, and there could be factors where because governments do money printing to fund wars and all these different things, that, that liquidity ends up finding its way through the markets and and you know uh, people get bullish uh, because they're like oh the government's keep printing I'm going to put my money in assets yeah yeah exactly it's an interesting phenomenon and uh, it, it's hard to say when these initial pieces of news break how long uh, of an impact this will have on markets but uh, based on history we usually see somewhere like a 24 to 72 hour reaction to the news. Hmm. And then markets tend to normalize as long as things don't get even worse than what that initial news report was. For sure. Uh, so it, it can often be kind of a sell the rumor by the news situation. Um, can we look at what the whales are doing? You know, as far as um, are they buying, selling? How are they navigating this type of activity that's taking place? Totally. Yeah, let's take a look. So in terms of this, uh, sorry, this tier right here, this is just the 10 plus BTC wallets and their combined holdings mm. still looking good. This is this is one thing that we're still optimistic about. There was a little bit of a flattening out period, and when whales actually take a break from accumulating, mm. that's when we tend to see tops. Uh, this one was kind of a mid-sized one, but after that drop back on the thirtieth, like right after it happened, we started to see more accumulation. It's not much, but they've added about a total of 813 more BTC since that drop happened. And if we go back six months, they've added a total of about 64.3K Bitcoin worth tens of billions of dollars, I believe. So mm. it's it's still looking quite strong from sharks and whales right now. And um, I think we mentioned it last time we talked, but the only concern I have is that stable coins aren't really being accumulated so the dry powder that implies that whales and sharks have more and more and more to swap for bitcoin that's a little on the limited side because they've already been swapping so much tether and usd coin for bitcoin over the past 
two-ish months or so when the, they really started to roll. Yeah, that makes sense. And I could imagine, you know, with the semi or mini euphoria that we saw last week with Bitcoin going to 66, the whales, if they're using data and so forth, they're going to sit back and say, we're not going to buy, let it drop, then we'll buy. We'll look for those opportunities. Yeah, tail is old as time. It's, it's kind of just, this is the way they make money. In addition to holding long term, when they want to add a little extra to their stacks, they can collectively push down prices or just decide to take a pause, uh, you know, swap some Bitcoin for a few yachts. I, I kid, of course, but you never know what they're doing. Um, and then they wait for prices to drop and then buy back in prices, go back to pre yacht buy prices. And suddenly they have a free yacht. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how it works when you have that kind of capital in a sentiment driven sector like crypto. Absolutely. Um, is there any other data from, from a Bitcoin standpoint that you want to highlight? Yeah, a few things. Um, this is a, a, a bit of a, a look at a, some of the top caps together, beginning with Bitcoin's total amount of holders. So conversely to what the whales are doing, the total amount of non-empty wallets, as you would imagine, is mostly comprised by tiny wallets. It's a lot easier to make a, a wallet that's the equivalent of $1 as opposed to $10 million, and there's way more of them. So when you see drops, that actually is a sign that a rally can either begin or continue because the small holders are liquidating their wallets and the sharks and whales are scooping up those coins. Hmm. Right now, it's still trickling up a little bit, but I'm noticing it's it's been flattening out since September. There, there seems to be some contentness from retail traders to take profit, maybe going back to August, September of last year. Uh, I think October was when the rally really began to, to take off. But the point is, we aren't seeing crazy amounts of retail wallets being created right now. So even though FOMO had been going nuts toward the end of September, we're not seeing uh, an, an immense amount of new wallets being created on a daily basis. I consider that a good long-term sign. Uh, naturally, you're going to see this growth over time. This is a four-year look at Bitcoin wallet growth. And for the, the good of the, the network and crypto at large, you want to see more wallets being created. But as long as it's not rapid growth like this, which would indicate FOMO, we're usually in a pretty good place. And then Ethereum doing its thing, it, it's it's much harder to tell with Ethereum because DeFi and staking just make Ethereum wallets so much easier to create. Mm -hmm. If I put these on a shared axis, look at how much if the amount of non-empty Ethereum wallets dwarf the amount of non-empty Bitcoin and Tether wallets. It's just insane, more than twice the amount, almost two and a half times the amount of Ethereum wallets compared to Bitcoin. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Um, boy, I, I am very curious as to what happens this month because, you know, there's been a, a big sentiment of October, October, right? <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And I remember you talking about this in the last episode that it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy yeah. or whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, could, could the herd be, we could have been screaming October, October, and September was not as bad as history has shown us. But could that flip because people are so excited about October that October is not a great month? Yeah, I, I stand by my theory that we have way too small of a sample size in crypto to be able to declare that one month is always good and one month is always bad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's one thing, like if we say Fridays are a good day of the week, there's at least been... Uh, a few thousand Fridays, if I'm calculating right, maybe somewhere near a thousand Fridays that have happened since crypto was introduced back in uh, back in uh, 2008, way back in pizza times. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> when it comes to you know looking at 15 years of data, and let's say 11 of those 15 Octobers were really good. Uh, that's not nearly enough. If you talk to any statistician, 
to be able to say, okay, we can confidently declare that, you know, <clears throat> 11 out of 15 Octobers means you can celebrate every October because crypto is going up. And especially when you start seeing words like October trending, that's a pretty good sign that the mainstream crowd is just kind of believing that this time of year is always bullish. You don't want them to believe that. If if the average retail trader is just buying into this narrative, it actually creates a, a higher probability of the opposite result coming true. So mm -hmm. I, I would I would pump the brakes on your enthusiasm that crypto is going to go up this month simply because simply because of the timing. It could go up for plenty of reasons, and then mm -hmm. if it does, people might think, "Oh, see, October is." Uh, is validated. I knew that it would go up. It, it could go up for so many reasons. And we'd have to be kind of cautious when it comes to playing the timing game. I, I see all the time people saying, um, I, I think that the all time high is going to happen in March of 2025. And we always scratch our heads and go, why? If you believe, if you believe that crypto is just going to chill for now and then suddenly go up in March, uh, why do you have any crypto at all uh, if if you're that confident? It, it's don't play the timing game is what I say. play play the uh, long term situation because timing in the markets always or I'm sorry, the amount of time in the markets always beats timing. Um, and any investor will tell you that, especially from an equities background. it's uh, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to predict and when we have something like the halving going on uh, in Bitcoin earlier this year, remember it wasn't the the month of the timing that crypto went up. It was like the six months before it, as people were anticipating it. So pay attention to the stuff that's going on deep into the future, rather than saying, "Okay, this event is happening now. I'm going to wait until like the day before it happens, uh, and, and then buy in." Right. So that's that's my tangent about timing and how I think October is a, is kind of BS. Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely something for folks to keep in mind. It's good advice and it go goes past the you know the herd mentality and and uh, your feelings and emotions and what you think the market's going to do. It's best you look at the data and, and the, to, your, to your point, it could be October, but it may not be. You have to be prepared for both, and it's best to look at data. Um, let's talk about XRP because we got some big news yesterday that Bitwise Asset Management filed for the first XRP spot ETF in the U.S. Obviously, this is a top ten asset by market cap, um, and it's a lot of. There's a big community. There's also a lot of controversy around it. Uh, there's obviously a deadline this week where the SEC may appeal. Um, the ruling, or I should say early next week. And, it, you know, we don't know what's going to happen there, but this is still some good news. What are you seeing for XRP? Yeah, from a social perspective, if we look at the top 10 trending coins, these are the assets that are seeing the highest percentage of discussion rise compared to their usual discussion rate. Outside of Curve, which is seeing quite a bit of attention themselves, XRP is the highest in crypto in terms of discussion rate right now. So clearly people are quite excited about it. Uh, you can see right here in our AI generated explanation of why it's trending. Recent filings by Bitwise Asset Management for a spot XRP ETF generated significant interest, sig signaling a move toward legitimizing XRP as an investment vehicle. So yeah, clearly people are excited about it. Notice though, so this little mini chart shows the social volume of XRP over the past week. It peaked here a couple days ago, and then right after that, prices collapse. And yes, part of this was because crypto overall started to see a retrace, but other assets did not see this sharp of a decline. And I think this is a perfect example of a buy the rumor, sell the news, where everyone thinks that this news is going to be good for XRP, and then... Uh, the sharks and whales and the powers that be say no, no, uh, we're not we're not going to be pumping XRP yet. Um, and this this has happened with like Bitcoin's ETF at the beginning of 2024. Uh, I think it was May or June when Ethereum got their own. 
you you see the news and everyone thinks it's bullish and then suddenly we see a, a retrace and this doesn't mean that the news isn't bullish it just means that the over enthusiastic people got a little too excited here bought at the top and they need to be a little more patient before the effects of this news uh, of course this is still a rumor right now they've only filed but assuming it's approved that's when you're really going to see uh, a lot of bullish momentum so it's it's basically people getting excited about speculative news right now mm. and um I, I think it's it's a very classic by the rumor sell the news situation gotcha yeah um to your point just news it hasn't been approved you know just because you file something doesn't mean it's going to get approved um it's a good sign um but there's also this looming appeal coming up and exactly. we don't know what the sec is going to do yeah so i mean the probability of an etf for xrp is a lot higher than it was a week ago because now we have a filing so that's great if you're an xrp fan just don't get uh overly excited especially when there's so much news that can just manipulate markets you never know with some of these media sources who put out a, a report that makes something seem probable when it's still a far way away um but at least according to the the metrics right now we saw a gigantic amount of transaction volume on this news it was about a three month high here and then going down similarly with circulation this is the amount of unique tokens moving on a daily basis and we saw 1.35 billion xrp being moved on september 30th uh, that was the highest since august 1st and then this one might be key right here i actually like to see that the average returns of addresses that have been active in the past 30 days they're back in the red down about two percent so there's actually slightly less risk than average if you were to buy during any time during XRP's existence as a publicly traded coin, you'd be buying while the average traders are slightly underwater on the short to midterm time scale. That's a good thing. From a 365 day perspective, they're just barely above 0%. So if we start to see this one get a little below zero, these are the ultimate times to buy. <clears throat> like we saw about four weeks ago, on September 6th, they were both way underwater, the short and long-term returns. And then suddenly we see this huge spike. And that's, I mean, almost every time when you see average returns well below 0%, it's such a great signal that buying is uh, a very likely good good strategy. And uh, we're, we're at least in a situation where XRP looks like it's, it's leaning toward a, a buy candidate once again. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's fascinating and how these things play out with sentiment and buy the rumor, sell the news events and so forth. Um, and that's where th this data is so helpful um, to show you where there might be buying opportunities and when possibly to sell um, based on what's happening in the market. Um, any other data, you know, re regards to XRP, or maybe we could jump to altcoins and like different categories like meme coins and so forth? Yeah, I just wanted to point out that XRP is pretty neutral in terms of sentiment. So even though it's getting a lot of discussion, I think it's a polarizing topic. Mm. Otherwise, we'd be seeing super bullish spikes like this, where everyone's just talking about it positively. So that's a good sign as well um i'd keep that in mind it's, it's not just about the amount of discussion it's about like what ratio of the discussions are bullish versus bearish so there's still kind of a, a tug of war going on between bulls and bears probably because this correction has uh pulled this down i, I bet right after the announcement of the etf filing it was way like super bullish like here and then people saw the retrace and said oh okay i guess it's not a big deal so mm. I find that interesting too. Um, okay, so in terms of meme coins, I've got this chart. This is pretty noisy. So I'm gonna turn everything into one week bars instead of one day. Yeah, some of these uh, meme coins uh, have been 
starting to gain some life again. I, know you, I think you highlighted some like SHIB and Bonk and so forth. Yeah, I mean, over the past week, there's still some of the better performers. Um, and we actually put out an insight yesterday about Dogecoin looking a bit intriguing on the bullish end. Uh, there's no guarantees and this isn't investment advice, but we do see that whale activity has been particularly heavy for Dogecoin right now. Uh, this is like three day bars just to, to kind of give broad uh, looks at what the metrics are doing. 1,203 whale transactions uh, at the end of September. That was the highest in about four months. And then we're followed up with the largest amount of daily active addresses since early April, seven month high. This tells me that there's a lot of buying the dip going on and it's not just retail traders. This blue bar here indicates that even after whales sold the top, that's clear based on this bar right before the green turned to red here, the whales are still being very active even on this downtrend. So what is most likely happening is they sold and then bought back in really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like the look of that. Um, and of course, Dogecoin does have some control over other meme coins. It works a little like Bitcoin, but for memes specifically mm -hmm. where Doge tends to go first and the profits of Dogecoin redistribute into other meme coins like Bonk, Whiff, Shiba Inu and others. So if you're into meme coins, you should be rooting for Doge to have a little bit of a rebound here over the next few days or a couple of weeks. Um, and that can very well start uh, another cycle of meme coin excitement. Gotcha. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm almost, I have a personal bias. And I'll, I'll be fully transparent. I'm not a big fan of meme coins. <laughs> so if I see liquidity going to them, uh, I kind of get annoyed. <laughs> but now when you say, by the way, and I respect that take, I think a lot of people have very mixed opinions about them and whether they should be part of the crypto ecosystem. But is it is it more so what they offer to crypto or is it, you know, maybe like the volume gets pushed into meme coins when it would be better served to stay in Bitcoin? What's your what's your opinion on on why meme coins aren't very great? Yeah, I, I mean, one, as you mentioned, the liquidity, it sucks liquidity away from Bitcoin. Yeah. And second, it, it takes away some liquidity from the blue chip altcoins. I know ultimately there's some rotation from memes to blue chips, like like your Cardano, like your XRP and so forth, right? Um, but also some of these are like projects that pop up overnight. I, I'm not putting Doge mm -hmm. and SHIB in there, but you know the ones that pop up on base or Solana and then they go nuts and then you have all these people promoting it on social media i find that so annoying because i know what it is and i know mm -hmm. there's a high possibility of a rug <laughs> that can take place totally so, yeah yeah it, it really is the perfect example of the short term uh more shilly community and and where they kind of live it, it's through meme coins that don't really have developers don't really have real life purposes in most yeah. cases not all but uh it's it's kind of a matter of what your approach is to crypto. If you're in it for the long term, you're probably not the biggest meme coin fan. If you're in it for a quick buck and, and more of the gamble aspect and very sentiment driven investments that are uh, perpetuated by trading groups that you may or may not be connected to, then meme coins might be more up your alley. But um, it it's regardless of any of our opinions, it's undeniable that they do have an effect on the overall crypto ecosystem and they can't simply be ignored, even if you never want to touch them with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, we'll see, man. Hopefully, uh, don't get me wrong. And, and I know some people hold meme coins. I'm not saying I don't want you guys to make money who are watching and listening, but you know, hopefully it's not as what we saw earlier this year where there's a ton of liquidity, you know, almost front running the market the, the memes are front running the market a bit. Um, you know, the, it's more balanced this time around, I guess, as we get later into the bull market. Totally. Yeah, it's, it's really the predictability that's the hard thing with meme coins. And, uh, you know, we don't give investment advice as it is. But if we do, uh, you know, provide insights, the 
the least confidence that we have is usually in the meme coin sector because of the lack of um, long-term development that we see in them that show that they have long-term sustainability, which makes them more of a crapshoot. So take that as you will. But what we can say is that the social dominance is huge right now. Um, it's, it's spiked to the highest level of interest in about four months here. Um, and yes, that that is, to your point, Tony, at the expense of layer ones and layer twos that are seeing very declining levels of discussion right now. So mm -hmm. this is a bit of a, a warning sign for crypto in general. Uh, when you see meme coin discussions get super high, it's usually a reflection of just the overall crypto crowd getting overly euphoric. Um, so we saw like Bitcoin's positive versus negative comments. This is another way of looking at, you know, the crowd's mood overall. And when it starts going towards speculative assets, it's it's often a caution flag for crypto in general. And I'm even curious, like looking in the past just a day. Yeah, so it's calmed down a lot. You can see right here, this spike here in pink happened maybe 12 hours before the official top for Bitcoin. And it was the highest level of discussion toward meme coins since late May. Uh, and late May was also a time when we were getting very close to a top, not quite as perfect as this one. But regardless, I think this is a, a pretty solid metric. When you just see meme coins rise in discussion, it's it's never a bad idea to take a little profit to, to stay safe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brian, great stuff. Uh always insightful thank you so much for joining me it's been a pleasure tony always great catching up and we'll do it again in a couple weeks